How are you this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? Though it's a little bit cloudy, but nevertheless, this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're rejoicing not because of the weather. We're rejoicing not because of uh, maybe something great happened to, to you today or the last week. We're rejoicing because God is good. God is good. Amen. And of course, we'd like to take, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our visitor who are here for the first time. I'd like to welcome Sandra and Rodolfo. <laughs> I think they, they work together with Sister Thelma, right? The hospital, correct? And of course, we welcome David and Xiao Li, which are brothers and sisters of Brother Mark. Brother Mark Yu. Praise God. Hi, Liza. It's good to see you again. Um, anybody else? Praise the Lord. Janine, of course. Second, second timer. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. How are you this morning? Blessed. Yes. You're blessed, right? Just being here to me personally is really a blessing. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I'm so looking forward to see you all. I'm so looking forward to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so looking forward to just acknowledge the goodness and, and blessings of the Lord upon my life, upon my family. So I am so ready to worship Him. I'm so ready to thank Him because He deserves the glory. He deserves the glory. And I was reading um, Psalms 107 and, and you know in the Bible when we read something that's been repeated, we know that's very important. It's important. It's a mega emphasizing something that is very important. In Psalms 107, it started this way, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Do you believe that His mercy endures forever? Because we have an unchanging God. We have a God who is faithful, who is the same yesterday, today, forever. He is unchanging. He loves us yesterday, today, and forevermore. No matter what. No matter what. And something that caught my eyes also. Verse 8, verse 15, verse 21, and verse 31. 31 that says this Oh that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful words to the children of men. This is an appeal. This is an appeal to God to God's people. This is an appeal for you and for me. Oh that men men, I mean men and women included. Give thanks to the Lord. Why? For what? For his goodness, for his goodness and for his wonderful words to the children of men. I don't know about you, but just recalling my life, it gives me uh, countless reasons why I should be worshiping God. And I'm sure it's the same thing with you. Just recall back, recall back your life and you will not run out of reason why you should be worshiping the Lord. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of man. God is deserving of our praises. God is deserving of our thanksgiving. God is deserving of our worship. He alone. He is our creator. He is our sustainer as well. He is our provider. He is our healer. He is our peace. He is our joy. He's our comforter. He's all in all to you and to me. He's all in all to you and to me. Where else can we go but to God? And you know what? The good part of that is that Holy Spirit has chosen us, this body, to be His temple. He resides in each one of us. And He's always caring for us. He's loving us. He's reminding us. He's guiding us. He's leading us every day of our life and because of that he deserves the glory oh that man would give thanks to the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful words to the children of men would you pray with me father god lord thank you for this beautiful day indeed lord this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and we will be glad on this day because today 
is the day that you have made. Every day, you create days of God for us to live life here on earth to God, Lord. Every day, not no 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 single day is an accident, Lord. You purpose and created that day for us, and even today, you made it so special because we are gathered together as believers of the Lord, those who've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, those who've been forgiven of sins of our sins of that Lord, and you have made us. Worthy to come into your throne of grace this morning to worship you and to praise you. Because of the Holy Spirit that's living inside of us, we are worthy to come to you, to praise you, to glorify you. Father God, Lord, nothing that we will are planning to do today meant nothing to you, not unless it's being led by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, Holy Spirit, take control of this wonderful day. Take control of every heart that are here in this room. Take control of every soul that are here today. Take control of every wandering mind. Lord God, you alone deserve an, our undivided attention. Thank you, Jesus of God, Lord. And may you be glorified in everything that you will do. We will be singing songs. They will, they will be our, our team will be playing instruments. And again, these are all for your glory. We are not here to perform, but we are here to worship. We are here to praise you. And Lord, today, oh God, Lord, you will also speak to us your words. So God, I pray for your power and anointing upon Brother Jojo, who will be your servant today, to deliver your words. Lord, again, he will be operating under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That his words are not his but yours, O God, Lord. And I pray that our hearts will be ready to receive what you have in store for each and every one of us today. Your words that will change lives. Your word that will transform lives. Lord, we are not just hearers, but as we be here, we will do it as well. And we will live accordingly. Lord, we commit to you today. And Lord, Lead us for this whole service from the beginning to the end. And we give glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. And let's proceed to our announcement uh, for the coming week. As always, um, you might be seeing it every week. It's being announced. But nevertheless, we would like to inform you, especially those people who are here for the first time, what's happening here at the church. And a few weeks ago, we made an announcement regarding Operation Happy Feet. And this is an initi initiative of our dear brother Rodel and sister Langbenesis. And uh, they, are, they are collecting, they are um, uh, looking for some slightly used uh, rubber shoes and flip flops and summer clothes for adults and children to uh, for, you, for you to donate. So I'd like to call sister Lang to come here in front and then just give you more details about this project. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Um, so we had started this uh, like during the pandemic. Uh, if you see those slippers, be sure that's what inspired us to do it. Um, one of the pastor in uh, the Philippines, they are actually Canadian missionary. They sent that picture. So that's the picture of, of the slippers of a boy. It's like a playmate of their son. So like. Here, you know, we have a lot of pairs of shoes. How many pairs of shoes do we have, right? And over there, if you see that, like, my heart broke. I said, how can you, you even wear that slippers? So right now, uh, we have done it before, and this is the second time that we are shifting. Like, uh, we don't put any number of boxes. Whatever that we collect, we will all be shipping uh, the entire package. Um, I encourage you to please support this ministry. Um, if you don't have any spare shoes, even donate like, you know, flip-flops, they cost $2. If you don't have time to buy the flip-flops, please give it to the greeter's desk. We'll be more than happy to go to the store and pack it and ship it. 
uh, my family will be uh, shouldering the shipping costs for the boxes and so far we have collected um, I got some donations from some other friends and uh, clients we have uh, more than 100 new flip flops so praise the Lord and but uh, we will be shipping this on Sunday, so if you have anything extra, please uh, drop them at our house or give us a call and we can pick up at your home. Okay, thank you so much for everyone who already donated. God bless. Thank you, Cecilia. Next on our agenda. Well, uh, midweek service, oh, that's uh, September the 13th. Okay, as uh, you are, most of you are aware, we gathered together during Wednesday just to be refreshed, to be renewed, and we worship the Lord, we fellowship, we worship the Lord, and we, we hear the Word of God, a short exhortation of God's Word, and of course, we pray together, we lift up the prayer requests of many to the Lord, and let me tell you, God answers prayers. God answers prayers, and we, we've seen so many miracles being be done by the Lord, through many people as we lift them up in our prayers so if you're available or you're free join at 7 p.m and this saturday this wednesday sister nimba will be delivering the word of god okay and if you have prayer requests please do not hesitate to let us know we will definitely pray for you and pray with you what else okay uh, i guess we are all back to normal, praise the Lord. September 15th, the Women's Night, Women's Night. And that will be at 7 p.m. Exhorter will be my wife. And host will be Sister Jasmine Polida. So the ladies, um, you are all invited. Okay, and uh, if Sister Jasmine did, don't mind to, to host 50 people, 50 ladies <laughs> at her place. Could we join? No, women only. <laughs> Okay. And of course, in the morning of that Saturday, the counterpart with the women of the men, okay? And this time, we don't want to host, <laughs> nobody wants to host, so we, 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 the, the part of the, the, uh, the gazebo there will host the men, a very generous host, actually. Rain or shine, right? Yes. Rain or shine, okay. So, facilitator will be Brother Arnold David, okay? And that will be... His, Picnic site C here at the at the park. What else do we have? Okay, next Sunday. Okay, September the tenth. That was seventeen actually. September the seventeen. Worship leader the Polidan family uh, will be doing the opening prayer. Or the word will be delivered by Pastor Mike Ortenza, and of course, refreshment will be the Nato and the Polidan family. Praise the Lord. What else do we have? Okay, again, those who come early, you're invited to join our intercessory prayer group. It's 9.45, here at the back, and uh, join them in prayer, you know. We, the church is being empowered through those prayers. Many things happen. Uh, God shows up always when we come to Him in prayer. Okay? Again, as... Uh, Always, we appreciate all of your uh, sacrificial giving to the works of God through BLA Christian Fellowship. And if you want to know more of what we do, please approach one of our leaders and we will definitely tell you what the Lord is doing through this church. Like, uh, for example, the mission, the many churches that we are supporting in the Philippines. And, uh, and then, uh, like, this one is a uh, uh, happy the project goes to one of our ministry partners in Iloilo, okay? So, if you want, you're interested to know what we do, please approach one of the leaders. Like I said, the, the, your giving, your sacrificial giving is being used for God's glory. And uh, we always pray for God's wisdom uh, that the leaders will be given the right decisions on how to spend the money that you are sacrificially gave at the words of God. And of course, we can, you can give using Tightly apps if you do have a smartphone and you can download Tightly or write a check and we have a drop box at the Asher's table. Okay, so later on and after the worship, we'll all have Sunday school and let's pray for them. Father God, Lord, thank you for our children of God. 
even at their young age, they have the hunger and thirst for your word. And they have the excitement to be, to be coming together in that small room uh, right there at the middle of the building, oh God, with uh, volunteers and teachers who are willing to teach them uh, your word, oh God. I pray for your spirit also to lead them and guide them that even in the young age and uh, young age and mind of oh God, they are willing to, to know more about you. And also, I, Lord, we pray for the giving of your people. Lord, I pray that you will multiply it and that it will be as only for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. And again, Lord, as always, our desire to glorify in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's welcome our worship team, Sister Richie and the team. people to be intentional in your worship first and foremost be intentional second do not let the people beside you uh, distract you from worshiping the Lord because if you let that then you are being robbed of the joy of worshiping Jesus so concentrate focus on him because we need it okay now you probably will then uh, think Okay, so it's Jesus or it's God, this um, uh, higher being who is really like egocentric because he wanted all the worship to be with him. Not necessarily. When we worship the Lord, he also carries us on that worship. And it's for us as well. So I just wanted to let you know that that's, that's one thing that I wanted to share. The second thing that I wanted to share is we all know that as... Um, sons and daughters of the king we have this great relationship with him right but somehow friendship is different things there's some reference in the bible that speak to uh, the friendship of god with us so there's a special connection and there's a special bond when we were called the friend of god Amen. Uh, i don't know about you but I think it's very special to be called a friend of God. Yes. Um, the higher being, the one who owns the universe, who calls me friend. How special is that? Uh, just give me a second here. I'm not, I'm not a techie person, so sorry. Um, but it's very important for us to know um, why do we have uh, to be in tune with Him whenever we worship. Um, just so you know, our friendship with God is practically demonstrated through our loyalty, allegiance, and allegiance to Him. And this is in reference to James 4.4. 4. As Jesus reminded His disciples, you are my friends if you do what I command to you. So it's very important that yes, you are a friend. we are a friend of God, but we have to follow His command. And it's, uh, you can find it in John 15.14. Father God, thank you thank you for special place um, for putting a special place in your heart for your people for the church lord god to be able to worship you you calling us as your friend lord god is very special we wanted to worship you we wanted to adore you let us focus lord god and be intentional in our worship to you in jesus mighty name we pray amen, amen. amen. amen.
praise your holy name, Father. And right now, Lord God, we wanted to speak the name of Jesus. We wanted to let the power of the name flow in our hearts, Lord God. Because of who you are, Father, in us.
Hallelujah. Church, you realize that you carry that name in you, with you. You realize that He is living inside of you. The most powerful name of Jesus is in us. We carry His name because we are His children. Therefore, no matter what you're going through, only Jesus is the answer. Only Jesus can fight our battle. Father God, Lord, today, we're so thankful for your Holy Spirit that is here right now, inhabiting the praises of your people. What a powerful presence of your Spirit in this place. Lord, even, we, even before we hear the word, you're already ministering to each and every one of us. You're already touching lives. You're already touching hearts. You're already conquering a rebellious spirit even in this place right now. Because no one, no one can stop you. No one can be against you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your powerful presence in, the, in, our, in this place. And you're not done yet, Lord. We know that. You have something more special today through your words. Lord, we ask, Lord, Holy Spirit, to take control of the heart of your people today, the listeners of your word. you will allow us to be focused on what will be preached here in front and you will all now we will also anoint the preacher today brother Jojo it is you Jesus it is your Holy Spirit that is in control and therefore we commit you this day the rest of this service we ask you Lord God to continue well in our midst, and the glory is yours. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's please give the Lord a clap on you once again. Praise God. Please be seated. Praise God. And i like to welcome very excitedly my sister, Mona. She just arrived yesterday. A familiar face to some some of you, okay? And she's she's trying to to claim that she looks like me <laughs> in her dream. But again, <laughs> praise be to God. Do we have any more uh, empty? Well, you can speak. You can sit now. Praise God. Do we have any, some uh, seats? Empty seats? Please occupy the empty seats. As our Sunday school is preparing to move to the room, can welcome everybody. I believe we have enough chairs. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Welcome, Lucas. Good to see you again. Praise God. So, uh, you know, in this church, by the way, my name is uh, Pastor Ricardo Jumagi. I'm the lead pastor of the church. And, uh, and in this church, we believe in the power of the Spirit. We believe that God can use anyone. The willing heart, the willing person, the willing soul to be used for His glory. And you, to most of you, you have seen that, you experienced that in this church, that God speaks to many different people with the hearts that surrender to Him. And so today, we have one of the uh, pastoral team or our, our, our deacon here who will be speaking the Word of God. And let's welcome Brother Jojo Tayan.
Praise God. Church. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, everybody can hear me from especially from the back. Yes. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Isn't it a good morning? Yes. Amen. It, we're, it, we're almost there. The fall is almost there. Amen. But uh, we praise God as we have heard in the past uh, uh, preachings, introductions. You know, God is good in every season. Amen. God is good in every season. Amen. Even in the worst winter, God is there. Amen? Sustaining us. So, uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself first. Uh, maybe some of you may not be familiar with me. I'm a familiar face in this church, but just to give you a little introduction of myself, just a little introduction. I am uh, Brother Jojo Tayag. Uh, I am the husband of Sister Thelma Tayag here, uh, who is uh, also uh, a member of this church. Uh, to give you a background of my involvement in the BLI Christian Fellowship, uh, I served as a, a member of the board of, board of elder, board of elders for almost three years. Uh, I had been actively involved also in the men's ministry, where uh, I became a leader also of this ministry for a year, and uh, I'm still very much involved also participating in the, as a leader of the care group, of the uh, care group and Bible study group of this church. So that's it, that's that's my uh, background. Uh, as Pastor Rick said, I am a lay leader here. I'm not a theologian, I am not an ordained pastor, but of course with the power of the Holy Spirit, God uses anyone in this pulpit to Amen. bring his message. Amen. And I believe today the Holy Spirit will work, God will work, God will speak to us. And so I need your attention. Pay attention to the very word of God because I know you will not leave this place not blessed by the Lord. Amen. Amen. So to, to start the uh, the message, I want to start it in a light uh, in a lighter mood, just to set the mood uh, first. Uh, I just want to ask who among you here loves fishing? Oh, voila! <laughs> oh, there you go. Some of them. Some of the kababayans. Okay, so before we go, i ask that question because before we go and dive into the message of the Lord this morning, I would like to share to you an experience recently that led me to meditate on the truth about the Word of God. So, at the recent Labor Day weekend, just last weekend, I was with family and some friends and doing some fishing. We were in the lake area and I was standing at the best fishing spot which is at the edge of a dam, a water dam. The weather was perfect, right? It was very hot last uh, weekend. It was perfect for fishing, and we were getting a lot of catch, which enjoying every minute of it. Imagine, it's my first time to catch a northern pike. It's not the, the giant northern pike, but it's just a small one. So as I stood happily near the railings that fenced the edge of the dam, I threw my line and suddenly, I felt a very painful sting on my right hand. Ouch. And just beneath my shoulder. It was a stabbing pain beyond description. And I saw the culprit causing it. Where's the culprit? There. That's the culprit. Imagine that. It was a big wasp whose sting stick tightly on my skin. I panicked with the painful situation and tapped with horror like this and after several attempts, the bug was dislodged from my arm. Then I saw several more coming. Oh my gosh, this is a house, a house full of wasps. So I had to be quick and run away from that spot. So after a couple of days of pain and swelling, really swelling, something came to my heart with this experience, which is, I believe, a parallel to the truth of the Word of God. It is so normal for us people who's busy with so many things to pay attention whenever we feel a painful situation. See? When we feel a painful situation, it gets our attention. Right? We never forget it. We 
because it's painful and learn some lessons from it. Just as my wife saying, lesson learned from that, don't go fishing anymore. So, <laughs> she doesn't want me to fish anymore. So by nature, the word of God is like the wasp with a sting. It may not physically penetrate on your skin, but it stabs in very heart, in your very heart and soul. It may not be the same feeling as for the sting of the bug, which is always very painful. But at times, the Word of God is also an encouragement and inspiration to hear. It's not always painful. What I am trying to point out here is that my prayer this morning is for us children of God, be stung today. Painful or not with these powerful words, so that we will pay attention to be encouraged and inspired, to remember and apply or act upon to what we will hear. Just like when I walk away, ran away from, the, from this wasp. I was busy fishing. I got stung painfully and the insect got my attention to warn me of its presence. Acted swiftly on the situation and will forever remember this life's lesson as long as I live. May it be the same for us today, this morning, as we hear God's message. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning, O Lord God. We invite you, your very presence, O Lord God. Lord, anoint each one of us. Anoint our hearing, anoint our hearts, O Lord God. Make your Holy Spirit move this morning, O Lord God, so that we will clearly see, Lord God, your message. We will clearly hear your voice, O Lord God. Hide me, Lord God, hide me from you, O Lord God, so that they will only see you. Lord Jesus, O Holy Spirit, may your word, Lord God, be an inspiration to us. May your word will edify this church, O Lord God. And may your word reveal all, Lord God, the revelations you want us to see, O Lord God, for there is power in your word. Again, Lord God, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, my the title of my message today, the message of the Lord, is the prayer of faith. Oh, we will get a lot of this. We will get a lot of this about prayer. Uh, actually, the series was started by Pastor Rick uh, the past weeks. And last time, uh, it's like, uh, there's a, there, there were, the theme is like, uh, praise in, victory in praise and victory in prayer. And uh, Pastor Rick was also message last uh, week about victory in prayer. And we could remember that uh, as he pointed out in three in three points, that God sees our situation, God hears our supplication, and God works in uh, a supernatural way. So we learn about those items, right? So we will continue now. Actually, when Pastor Rick told me and assigned me this uh, this uh, verses in the scripture, I was reading it, and I'm telling you, I seen a lot of gold nuggets in this Word of God. I'm picking them one by one, these gold nuggets, putting them in the basket, and my basket was so full and I can't stop. Actually, there's so much things that we can learn from this uh, scripture of the Word, if we will, of course, pay attention to the, to the Word of God. And so, we'll take you now, I will bring you now to our text, the in James, Chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. Would you stand please in reverence for the word of the Holy Word of God so we can uh, read it together? James chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Again, I repeat that. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, 
and then, then the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. I would like to read it also in Tagalog for the benefit of our Kababayans and other, you know, who's fluent in Tagalog. So, the, the James is Santiago. So, it's Santiago, versículo 5, ber, uh, at sa kapitulo 5, versículo 13, 18. Sabi po dito, May paghihirap ba ang sino man sa inyo? Manalangin siya. Nagagalak ba ang sino man? Umawit siya ng papuri sa Diyos. May sakit ba ang sino man sa inyo? Ipatawag ninyo ang matatandang pinuno ng iglesia upang ipanalangin siya at pahiran ng langis sa pangalan ng Panginoon. Pagagalingin ng Diyos ang may sakit dahil sa panalangin may pananampalataya. Palalakasin siya muli ng Panginoon. At kung siya'y nagkasala, patatawarin siya sa kanyang mga kasalanan. Kaya nga, Ipagtapat ninyo sa inyong mga kapatid ang inyong mga kasalanan at ipanalangin ninyo ang isa't isa upang kayo'y gumaling. Malaki ang nagagawa ng panalangin ng taong matuwid. Si Elia sa isang tao na tulad din natin. Nang mataintim siyang nanalangin na huwag umulan, hindi nga umulan sa loob ng tatlong taon at anim na buwan. At nang siya'y nananalangin para umulan, umagsak nga ang ulan at namunga ang mga Praise the Lord for His holy word. You may sit down for. The words pray or prayer are used in every verse. If, we, if you will see, if you go back to that verse, there's a total of seven times in the passage. As Pastor Lee said, when it's repeated, it's something important. The big idea is obvious to us. As James winds down this letter, he wants us to see that true Christianity is fueled, fueled by praying faith. The heart of God is open to every aspect of our life through prayer. We not only have a God to worship, we have a Father who cares. Remember that. We just not have a God to worship, we have a Father who cares. This passage takes us deep into God's grace. It tells us the good news that God is for us, not against us. Now, he has, has actually, he has, God has every reason to be against us. We have sinned. We are still sinning until now. We have sinned and rebelled and turned away from him. But what is his response? In the face of our weakness and sin, God's response in the cleansing blood of Christ in an open door to heaven by prayer. See? He responded to the blood of Christ and opened a door to heaven by prayer. I remember, I remember when Pastor Rick said, "Let's imagine a, a you know a cabinet, a, a pantry full of blessings inside, and it's locked. But God gave us the key, the key to open this pantry of blessings. He could slam and close the door of His throne room. Actually, He has every right to." Instead, He calls us to come boldly before Him with all our needs, promising His throne of grace is never closed. Remember that. God is always open. The, the door of grace, the throne of grace is always open. Before we go too far in this passage, let's just marvel at the grace of prayer. We have the privilege to come to God. Imagine that. And He listens to us and responds. That, for me, that is astounding. Astounding for that. It's very, very, it's awesome. The God of the universe cares about your little life. Just like the song we have heard, Who Are We, Diva? We are so little. The God of the universe cares about your little life. It's not little to Him. Mind you, it's not little to Him. He made your life. He sustains your life. He cares about your life. God gives you your good days. God does not distance away on your bad days. He never leaves you. God doesn't ashamed you for your failures, but redeems you from the slavery of sin. God does not regret getting involved with you. He delights to care for you as only He can. He provides a way to healing and peace. Though none of us deserve it. The God who created and rules all, we see and know, sees and know us. 
as the deepest possible level. That's why God knows our situation. He can see our situation. And He calls us to Himself to find provision for all the ails, uh, that ails us and a fitting end for all that delight us. So what does God want us to see about prayer in this passage? There were two things. Two things you will learn today. Very simple. When we pray, can I ask you this question? When do we pray? Okay. Why we pray? See, we pray. And then why we pray then? Okay, we'll start with the first item. When we pray. Muslims, I, I've worked in the Middle East for eight years in Saudi Arabia. And I can see Muslims pray five times a day. Imagine, they close up everything and suggest to kneel. Wherever they are in the street, they kneel and pray. Imagine Muslims pray five times a day. Buddhists pray three times a day. Hindus pray at least once a day. But the Bible calls Christians. When? When do we pray? First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 in the New Kings Version. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. See? They may pray five times a day, three times a day, once a day, but God says in the Bible, pray without ceasing. That's how Christians pray. Why? Because the God that we serve is a God who is near. Yes, He is transcendently above us, He's in heaven, but He is also imminently near to us because He is in us. He is always with us. We can pray anytime. Right now, you can pray. We don't have to face Mecca. We don't have to bow before handmade idols. We don't have to be in a temple or in a deep meditation. Our God is always available to us moment by moment throughout the day. Hallelujah. Our God is always available to us. God's ears are always open. His strong room door is never shut and the only access we need is faith in Christ. And the power of the Holy Spirit, Amen. who is freely given to all who believe. You have to believe. We don't have to wait until we get our act together. We don't have to find the right words first. All we must do is come in prayer. Jesus told us not only come to not only to come in prayer, but to come often. To pester God in prayer. Wow, we're pestering God in prayer. To knock on His door no matter the hour. So there's a, a known author, a known writer, Tim Keller, once said, The only person who dares wake up a king at 3 a.m. in the morning for a glass of water is a child. Amen. Did you experience that? When your small kid bug you, Dad, I need, I need a glass of water. Butter. I need milk. So, the only person who dares to do that, even a king to a king at 3 a.m. in the morning, is a child. But, we have that kind of access. We can feel like a child to go to the father. But unlike a father, like me, who might eventually get tired of being woken up every morning, God will never grow frustrated. Every earthly father has a limit. You and me, the Father's here. You have earthly limit, but God doesn't. He's perfect for the needy people like us. He is perfect for the needy people like us. High maintenance people like us are perfect for God. See, we're so high maintenance for us. We have a lot of complaints. We have a lot of petitions to the Lord. That's why we are high maintenance. And God is perfect for us. Our need doesn't turn him off, it energizes him to draw even nearer. So when we pray, it draws God even nearer. He doesn't grow annoyed or overwhelmed. He calmly and gently and lovingly receives us and cares for us. So James highlights this access to God beginning in our verse. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful or happy? Let him sing praises. See? When do we pray? When do we pray? When life hurts? 
when life feels good? Prayer is an outlet for everything that happens. Nothing is too significant. Are you suffering? Right now, are you suffering? Are you overwhelmed with so much problems? Pray. James doesn't quantify the type or amount of suffering. Sometimes we tend to think things need to be really bad before we go to God. That's things ouch. See? Sometimes we tend to think things need to be really bad before we go to God. Kapag po malala na situation, doon tayo lulukod sa Panginoon. Nakakalungkot po, ouch. Di po ba? I am guilty of that. I have to wait things to get worse before I go to God. We think this is hard, but I should be able to handle it. I should know the answer. Kaya ko to. It should be better at dealing with hard things. I should, I should, I should. Laban lang. Di po ba? Yung that we hear that most of the time. We should all over ourselves and we don't seek the help we need. But James doesn't say, pray as the last resort. He doesn't say, pray when things are so hard you can't do anything else. He doesn't say, pray when suffering reaches more than you can handle. He doesn't put a qualification on our suffering. God cares. He's there. He will help you. In suffering, you always feel alone, but the gospel says you never are. Jesus suffered like us that we might have a merciful and faithful high priest. He's there always. If life hurts for whatever reason, you should pray. This world, for its fallenness, you can see what's going on in our world today. It still holds beauty that takes our breath away. The poet Gerald Manley Hopkins said, the world is charged with the grandeur of God. The world is charged with the grandeur. When we wake up in the sun, when we wake up, like this morning, when we wake up, and the sun, example, the sun is shining, and the air is crisp, and the smell of coffee, the smell of Tim Hortons is good, and the day is open and available for a productive and meaningful job, and our heart swells with the good things. What do we do with that gratitude? We praise God. Amen? We praise God. We thank God. Prayer and praise are the same things. Hallelujah. This is a very, very good lesson that I have learned, a, re a revelation that I have learned from the Word of God. Prayer and praise are the same things. Why? A praise rightly directed is prayer. Praise rightly directed is prayer. When we are praising here a while ago, we are actually praying. Because it's rightly directed to God. It's our heart's cry to our Maker saying, Thank you, Lord. So generally and individually, we pray when something bad or good happens to us. Now, James moves from the general to the specific now. From individual to small group in verse 14. Now he's asking again, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Here is another time to pray. When sickness overwhelms us and takes us into the shadow of death, which is all of us vulnerable. James is not talking about the common cold, although we should pray also for, for the cold. It will be very common now, soon. But about those particular bad illnesses. Answer. That leaves us wondering if life will go on. The sick person can call the elders of the church and they can come and pray over them and anoint them with oil. This is not like, I'll try anything shot in the dark just to get well, but a humble seeking of God's help. When you are down and out, God still provides. He has ministers to help you by prayer. James gives specific instruction to the elders. They pray and anoint the sick person's head with oil. What does this oil do, you ask me? James doesn't mean the oil holds some special healing power in the puto agimat. It's, it's not a medicinal in nature either. Rather, the oil consecrates and sets the person apart to God. It's a symbol that the elders are bringing this specific person and this is specific request for healing to God. Verse 15 speaks of this kind of prayer's result. 
And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. This is tricky, brothers and sisters. We have to be uh, mindful of this. This is a tricky verse. Some people have used it as God's promise that all who pray the prayer of faith will be healed. We'll pray for you. You will be healed. Claim it. So when the person isn't healed, it's usually blamed on the lack of faith. Isn't it? Most of the time. The elders didn't believe enough. I think those pastors and elders who prayed over him didn't believe enough. Or it is often goes, the sick person doesn't have enough faith. That's even worse. But is that what James means when he talks about the prayer of faith? Does it sound like God to require a certain strength from us to bless us? Did Jesus come to us with demands that we measure up to his standard? Did he rebuke the man who said, I believe, help my unbelief? Did he recoil when Thomas sought to touch his scars after his resurrection? Or did he, he stoop low and humble himself to our level? Did not Jesus come gentle and lowly with his heart open? To the weak and sinful and doubting would god then be so cruel as to keep his blessing from those whose faith he deemed insufficient even as they look to him for help would god withhold his power until we mustered up the right amount of faith if the prayer of faith means all who believe enough are healed and only those who believe enough are healed then why was false heart of the flesh not taken away. Have you ever thought about that? Why did Paul have to leave sick friend behind on his missionary journeys as we see in the book of Acts? Did Paul lack of faith? No. Lack of healing cannot be because of lack of faith. I'm telling you, it's having no faith at all is different from lack of faith from this point of view. When God says no, it must be for a reason and we cannot yet see. Conversely, Jesus healed some not because of their faith, but to simulate their faith. In John 9, Jesus healed a man born blind. The man didn't ask for healing, but Jesus healed him anyway. In that instance, faith was a result of healing, not a prerequisite for him. Amen? Here's the point. Healing is a gift. It's not a reward. We are not in charge of God. Yes. Pulling the lever of His healing powers by the right kind of prayer. Working the angles and mustering up enough faith like coins from the vending machine. We humbly trust God and ask for healing, but we leave the results in His hands, in His will. The prayer of faith is not faith that's something we want, even desperately think we need. will be granted if we pray hard enough. It is laying our lives in God's hands. Amen. Consecrating ourselves to Him and trusting His will by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's truly looking to God, not to anything else for help. Amen. That doesn't mean physical healing always comes now. It also means God can heal despite our doubting. It's not the strength of our faith that matters. What matters is the one in whom we have faith. Amen. 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 God knows what He's doing and we need only to trust His will. Maybe He will heal. Maybe He won't. But we know ultimately, no matter what's the answer to our prayer, is right now that one day, those who pray with such faith will be healed. We all must die. It's a reality. But those in Christ will be raised again. Amen. We will have perfect glorified bodies in the new heavens and the new earth. Amen. Now, how do we get this glorious body? James goes on. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Oh, if he has sins, he will be forgiven. Healing has more than a physical dimension. Confession of sin heals. Confession of your sins. Not every sickness is a result of sin, though. That's not what James means. But sickness can be a result of sin. We barely believe that today. But the Bible does link sin and sickness. Jesus healed the paralytic by saying his sins were forgiven. In Luke chapter 5 verse 20. Paul told the Corinthians some were sick because they abused the Lord's Supper. 
1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 30. Confession of sins heals us as we pour out our souls to our gracious and merciful God. I know we have a different background when it comes to confession of sins. But we have to take this in context, in this in His Word. And sometimes we can't do that on a normal day. Sometimes sickness is the means by which we are humbled enough to confess and seek God's face. And notice what James says. He will be forgiven. God is faithful to give our sins because Jesus, our substitute, took the penalty for them on the cross. And God is faithful to raise up because raise us up because Jesus, our Redeemer, conquered the grave. Our big issue with this passage shouldn't be trying to figure out exactly what the prayer of faith is. But to figure out God calls us to have faith in Him and live our lives in His hands, humbly confessing and trusting His perfect will. Now James then takes us to a step further from individual prayer to small group prayer to corporate prayer. Look at this verse in 16. And therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Wow, that's another level. The exhortation to confession and prayer isn't reserved only for the sick. It is for everyone. You don't have to be sick then. Ay, magkakonfess ako. Bakit kapatid? No. It is for everyone. Confession is like removing the oxygen from sin's lungs. It heals. And when the others listen and then pray on our behalf, they help us find the healing of forgiveness. Healing of forgiveness. Now, in context, as I was saying a while ago, James may have in mind those who have mutually sinned. If you have sinned to your brother or sister, sin against one another which harms the church body. Sins against God are confessed to God. But sins against God and others are confessed to God and to others. We do that carefully and humbly. God wants us to be right with one another. So James says, confess your sins to one another. He didn't say, confess one another's sin. Did, did you get the difference? He says, confess your sins to one another. Not confess one another's sins. What does he say? And pray for one another. Just as there is a command to the sinner to confess, there is the responsibility of one hearing to pray, intercede, take that matter to God, and move forward. It's like, I have sinned to my brother like Brother Ben. I have to confess my sin to him. I'll go to him. And then I pray with him. See, to ask for forgiveness for that. It will heal. James doesn't say embarrass one another or shame one another, but pray for one another. What we really believe about God is seen in this interaction when sins are confessed. If we believe in the free grace and forgiveness of God in Christ, we will freely forgive others. Because we have experienced such grace ourselves. Do you see the beauty in that? This is how deep fellowship is birthed in God. That's why we have fellowship with our brothers and sisters. It's a simple but profound practice that we cultivate the gospel culture built in the gospel doctrine of grace in Christ. During fellowship, this gives us you know, the privilege or the chance to go to the brother or sister to confess your sin and ask forgiveness for whatever you've done to him or her. This is a path to corporate healing anytime we need it. So that's when we pray. God invites us to pray because He cares about our lives and the specifics in the passage right there. Now, why we pray? Lastly, why we pray? God not only coaches us when to pray, but He also shows us why we pray. We've seen it already. We pray because by prayer, God heals and forgives. But there is more. In the second part of verse 16, James said, The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. The prayer of the right person availed much. Then he jumps into an example of Elijah in verses 17 and 18. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Elijah is no special, I'm telling you. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed fervently that it might not rain. For three, and six, three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. 
Elijah is an example of the righteous person's powerful prayer that works. So, the most basic level, we pray because God says prayer works. You don't have to be special. We know Elijah is a prophet in the Old Testament. But the reason James chose Elijah as an example is that he was, it's not because he was an extraordinary prophet. Someone so far above us. James says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He is human like us. It is the ordinariness of Elijah that James wants us to see. He was just a man, but his prayers work. Why? If we go back to the Old Testament, we see that Elijah's prayers are not out of nowhere. He just didn't like, he wasn't sitting there and one day, oh, you know, I'm going to pray for no rain, and that will show them. No, in Deuteronomy 28, God told Moses to tell the Israelites, If you do not obey the Lord your God, these curses will come upon you. The Lord will strike you with scorching heat and drought. The sky over your head will bronze and the ground beneath you iron. The Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust and powder. Elijah lived in the day of Israel's rebellion and against God. Israelites are against God. He was praying God's words after him. That's why it worked. He's praying God's word. This is another secret that is revealed to us today. Working prayer is asking God to do what he has already said he would do. We don't realize that when we pray. Elijah is the righteous person aligning his prayers with the promises of God. So whenever we pray, think of the promises of God. We just don't bubble and bubble our prayer go to, with our petition. We should align our prayer with the will of God, asking God to do what He said He would do. That's why we have the Word of God. We pray ultimately because God is true to His Word. And when our prayers are aligned to His Word, we have confidence He will do what He said He would do. Because God never tell a lie. God never changed. Elijah prayed because God had spoken. We pray because God has spoken. Prayer is not a string of empty words to a worldless God, but a pointed plea to a speaking Savior. Amen. We know what God plans to do in this world because He has told us. We know His purposes. We know His intentions. We have the Bible as our ever-present word from God about His plans for our lives and for this world. And for this world. And in the Bible, we have examples like that of Elijah. Of people who pray, asking God to do what He said He would do, and God answered those prayers. We pray not because it's our idea, or because it makes us feel better, but because God has ordained that the prayers of His people bring about His purposes. By prayer, God invites us to His work. We are part of God's purpose when we pray. Just like Charles Spurgeon, uh, a noted uh, pastor said, Prayer moves the arm that moves the world. Just as Elijah's prayer directed the rain, your prayers, if you are in Christ, direct the world. Yes, God is sovereign and can do what He will without us. But He chooses us. He chooses to use us in our prayers. The Bible sees no contradiction there. Your prayers matter, brothers and sisters. You're just like Elijah, you and me. You're weak, you're not enough, you're powerless. But your prayers are not powerless because God is not powerless. Prayer is not magic incantations thrown into the wind, but faith put in the God whose arms are not short, whose hands are not weak, and those power upholds the universe. Your prayers like Elijah are powerful because you are praying to a powerful God. Amen. So, in the last the part here, how does this relate to what James had said before? In our lives, we pray because God is involved. He is near. He is with us. He cares. We take our hard things and our good things to Him and their proper landing place inside the love, which is too great and we don't, not, we don't deserve, but instead gives us grace and peace and a secure place to stand in this ever-shifting world. We pray for healing and confess our sins because we know God has promised to heal and to save. Even if our physical healing must wait until heaven, 
the healing of forgiveness is available right now. Just as in Romans 8 1, chapter 8, verse 1, it's always true. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. We know because of Jesus that there is a glorious new life out ahead for all who love Him. How do we know? Because like Elijah, Jesus was made a human just like us. The author of Hebrews says in chapter 2, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, He, Jesus Christ Himself, likewise partook of the same things. He had to be made like His brothers like us in every respect. In the incarnation, Jesus became like us. Naging tao po siya. He lived a human life with human suffering, with human prayers. He entered our world in order to save us by living the life we should have lived and dying the death we are owed because of our sin. Jesus became a man like us to save us. Because of that, when He rose from the grave three days after the cross, He put what? He put a big yes. He put a big yes at the end of every one of God's promises. Imagine that. All God's promises will be granted because He rose from the dead. Because of Jesus, He will be raised one day. We will be healed. We will be forgiven. We will find that deepest prayers of our hearts are granted as God plans His work in us. Not because we deserve it. Not even because we prayed the right prayers. But because God will bring His good promises to pass. And not one word. All of that, He promises, for He promised we fail. We pray because prayer aligns with God's word works. Prayer draws us closer to God. Closer to His gospel. Closer to His word. Closer to His heart. In prayer, God is inviting us today into reality with Him. As we await the day, we see Him face to face. What is better than that? So lastly, I would like to share you some, you know, we Filipinos love reading quotes. And we hear a lot of quotes here uh, in many instances of uh, many preachers. So I'd just like to share you some quotes here. Next. First one, he who kneels the most stands the best. By the Moon. Prayer it, it is not a preparation for the battle. It is the battle. Leonard Gravenkiel. Sometimes the answer to prayer is not that it changes life, but that it changes you. Like James Freeman. A day without prayer is a day without blessing, and a life without prayer is a life without power. By Edwin Harvey. If you only pray when you're in trouble, you are in trouble. I just put J. Tiger because it's a man. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. So if you only pray when you are in trouble, you are in trouble. The great people of God today are the people who pray, not those who just talk about prayer. I will pray for you, brother. No, those people who really pray are the great people of God. S.D. Gordon. Busy life, this is one, I like this one. Busy life makes prayer harder, but prayer makes a busy life easier. See, busy life makes prayer harder. That's our reason. I'm so busy. I don't have time to pray. But mind you, prayer makes a busy life easier. And lastly, prayer is not a spare wheel that you pull out when in trouble. Like when you are stuck on the road, flat tire. It is not like a spare wheel that you pull out when in trouble. But it is a steering wheel that directs the right path to out. And no. Let's Lord Father God, we thank you for today, oh Lord God. Thank you for, for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for uh, giving us, Lord God, the pure mind and heart to understand your word. Lord, from this day on, oh Lord God, may you be with us, Lord God, as we pray, Lord God, and work with you. Lord, we learn today, Lord God, that praying, Lord God, is like working according to your purpose, oh Lord God. We work with you, Lord God, in prayer. You are in us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for this revelation. And it is my prayer today, oh Lord God, that each one of us, oh Lord God, will, has, will have this lifestyle, oh Lord God, of kneeling down and going to your 
throne, Lord God, throne of grace, an open throne of grace for everyone, oh Lord God. I pray, oh Lord God, that those who have financial problems, I pray that those who are sick will be healed, those with financial problems, Lord God, you will provide for them. And I pray, oh Lord God, that this message of yours, oh Lord God, will sink into our heart, Lord God. And we will use this, oh Lord God, as long as we live, Lord God, we will use this as our that's the power, the source of power, oh Lord God, as we go to your holy throne and lift up our petitions to you. Again, Lord God, we thank you, oh Lord God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Jojo. Praise the Lord. Didn't I tell you that the preacher in this church is the Holy Spirit? Amen. It's not me, it's not Brother King, it's not Brother Nell, it's not whoever you see here is all to the power of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, when God sends someone you hear from, it's worth listening to because God speaks directly to whomever He wants to use. And today the Lord spoke to us very powerfully about prayer. When to pray? When to pray? why we pray. So the, look, I'm asking a question, when do we pray? Anytime, every time, anywhere and everywhere. We pray not just when we are in trouble because like Brother Giorgio, we do pray only when we are in trouble. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. Let me add one, one quotation. A one week without prayer makes one week. Right? Well, I mean seven days without prayer makes one week. Right? And that's Brother George's quotation as well. <laughs> but let me tell you that I am so encouraged, I am so blessed, I am so empowered, I am so afflicted with the Word of God through Brother Jojo. And my prayer is that you and I will be a man of prayer, a man and woman of prayer. Because there's, there's so much to know about God's will, about His plan, about his life, about his will for you and for me and we can only do uh, know his will through prayer through prayer and guess what god listens to his children the the prayer of the righteous man and woman can accomplish so much you and i has been made righteous through jesus christ not my righteousness not my holiness but jesus christ's righteousness becomes mine Therefore, I've been given the access to the throne of grace. Amen? So, again, my prayer is that you and I will be a man and a woman of prayer. Because prayer works. We can only come to the throne of God's grace through abandoned knees and folded hands in surrender to God. Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap of it. Would you stand with me? Father, oh, what a wonderful day it is, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for your powerful presence. Right from the very beginning of this gathering, your power was so real, was so power, your presence was so powerful, was so real in our singing, in our, the playing of instruments, and our worship of you, God, Lord, your spirit was with us. And Lord, in the preaching of your word, you spoke very powerfully. You spoke very anointedly. And Lord, you revealed so much nuggets. You, 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 you explain your word very powerfully. You got through Brother Jojo. And Lord, spoke to our hearts and speaks to our, to our lives as well, O God, Lord. Thank you for the word that you spoken to us and Lord it is my prayer that the church will be a prayerful church this church will be a prayerful church there's power in prayer oh God and you've given us the free access to your throne of grace because of your son Jesus Christ you've given us the key to unlock your blessings your power your presence your provision through our prayers, O oh God, Lord. And your promise to us is that when we ask anything in your name, 
you will give it to us, you will answer us, not according to our plan, not according to our will, but according to your will, O God. And Father, we thank you again for today. Thank you for the life of Brother Jojo. You abuse him powerfully today, O God, Lord, as always, O God. And we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. And may the love of God, the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. And everyone says, Amen. God bless you all. God bless you.